Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're having a fabulous day today. Well, once a month, the awesome folks that support this project over on Patreon make a suggestion of a video that they would like to see me make. And this is that month's video. Uh, this suggestion comes from Dave. Now, Dave uh, would like some help with some identification and specifically zeolites. And I just so happen to know a fair amount of, about zeolites. This does, however, extend beyond the zeolite group of minerals, and it extends into lots of other, <laughs> other things that you might come across. And he wants to know, how the heck do you know what it is that you're, you're looking at? Well, there's a, a, two primary techniques that we're going to uh, talk about today. One's a little bit of a cheat. The other one is using some magnification, which he says he has a microscope. I have two microscopes. I have a nice, very nice microscope. And then I have a more budget-friendly digital microscope. And then you can also play along doing something similar to this at home by taking a jeweler's loop and holding that in front of the lens of your camera phone and, uh, or the camera on your phone <laughs> and uh, get some nice high quality magnified photos that way. Well, with that said, we're going to head over to the bench. We're going to look at some specimens and we will identify them. So generally speaking, when you want to do identification work on something big, like this big quartz crystal here, one of the ways that we go about that is we run a series of tests. Now we've covered that here on the channel a number of times, but as just an example, you might use something like this right here, which is a hardness pick set, and we would scratch our specimen, and we can collect a whole uh, range of different data about that particular specimen. And we can go over to something like Mindat and use their advanced mineral search tool, put in all these different characteristics, and then come back with a list of potential candidates of something that, well, this might be. <laughs> Very handy. However, it gets tricky. It gets tricky when you have something like this, okay? So with this guy right here, well, we have uh, some very vesicular basalt and we have multiple large vesicles that have some kind of mineralization in it. So things like scratch testing and specific gravity will damage it, okay? Um, it is always nice to uh, collect some specimens for destructive testing when you're out and about. And uh, I, I don't wanna do it for this, which that's common. You don't wanna do it for everything. So we're strictly talking about what we can visually see about the specimen. Now, the easy thing to do is to always catalog your specimens. Like uh, this right here is basalt with Levine in that bug. And I believe that's some anal seam up there. This came from the Beach Creek Quarry. And while the cheating way of doing it is to head over to Mindat and check out the Beach Creek Quarry listing and find similar looking specimens that you can compare against. Well. That's not always the case. Uh, you know, there's a number of reasons why perhaps Mindat doesn't have that listing, but it's also important to just check against it. So you may have collected whatever, whatever the zeolite is at one locality and it's downstream from another locality that is known about. So kind of checking the region cataloging your finds with GPS where you found them is important here. So that's an easy way. The easy way is just that, hey, mine looks like this. And uh, this other guy from the same area says this is this. That's one way to do it. We're going to get a little more in depth now. We're going to look at some stuff under the microscope. Here we have several different examples, such as this little guy right there. And uh, this is already a piece that I have identified, and this came from the Burnt Cabin Creek Road Cut, a piece of cabazite. And we will look at that under the digital microscope here, and we can kind of start to make some observations. Observations. How's that? Well, what does that look like? Now, if you were to sit there and see that standing by itself, it does not look like a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we do lack a little bit 
of the third dimension here, um, but I can show you what I see. I will take a image right there and we will talk about it. I will highlight some things. I can see this shape in it. Now that shape correlates with a book written on the subject, which is very handy. And you can also get it for free as a PDF. And I will link to that down below. And we are talking about the fabulous zeolites of the world. Well, if we head on over to the chapter on Cabazite, we can look at some of the morphology and find what it is we are looking at and that is a simple penetration twin right there. That is what I see in that specimen. And uh, this is the hard way, the hard way of doing identification work without running tests is essentially it's a game of memorization. I have read this book many, many times. I have memorized a whole bunch of different uh, visual, how to say it, I guess I've memorized the morphology of the zeolite group, which sounds incredibly nerdy, um, and perhaps it is, so that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Let's line up another one here and I'll show you a little bit what I'm talking about here, okay. Well, I think we're in focus right here. That's looking good. Okay. That is a very distinctive shape in that. Now, I know from my own uh, testing and observation that it is anal seam. So we can flip over to the anal seam listing here in this book. So you can clearly see here in the morphology, we have, well, a very similar looking thing. And that shape, the trapezohedron, we can see in this bed right here that you're looking at. All of these little shapes here are, are well, they're just that. Now, within that, there are different rare types that can be found, but that gets us within the ballpark. That gets us within the ballpark, and uh, you can start to uh, go from there like, there's notched ones from very specific localities, okay? Um, neat to see, neat to see. And there's actually some other stuff happening in here. Uh, like we have some Thompsonite balls up there. I believe those are Thompsonite balls. We'll look at another one here as an example. There we go, that white poof ball. That white poof ball, that is what we're looking at next. What is it? What is it? I'm gonna head over to page 156 here. Now this is a little bit more tricky. Uh, here, um, I purely made this identification based off of things I had seen on the internet and uh, what I have read about. I do not have the ability to really, really check the morphology of these. Um, I'm getting close to that, but you really need something to that kind of scale, like scanning electron microscope, to be able to uh, look at the ends of those needles. And that is my own limitation here. Um, but based upon the locality and known tested examples, that is what we, uh, what we have there. Um, and that is also on a bed of clinoptolite. So the white ball is there and, I, and then everything else behind it is clinoptolite. We have clinoptolite. I know that the whole process that I just showed you of doing comparisons with known examples and the process of intense memorization may not be for everybody. Some people just want to enjoy the visual aesthetics of the things that they find, and that's fine too. However, this is a part of the world of mineralogy, rock hounding, that I enjoy, and I think other people enjoy it as well. So Dave, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you have an idea that you'd like to see made into a video, I would encourage you to support the project over on Patreon. There'll be links down below, so you can go check that out. 
having a lot of fun over there. You get to watch the content, uh, the YouTube videos, two days early, ad-free, and there's a bunch of extra content over there as well. I believe there's about 12 hours of extra video that you can go check out. Lots of fun, lots of good stuff happening over there. Well, thanks for coming by, everybody. I appreciate you, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.